pediatric consultation and liaison services seem to be one way to bring the expertise of the small number of child and adolescent psychiatrists to a larger number of clients. These programs vary widely in their design. Dr. Richard Martini and Dr. Lisa Giles looked at the variety of programs and discussed their own. There's obviously a, a, hu a huge need for child psychiatry services in children and adolescents in general, um, and those rates are even higher among kids with chronic medical illness. And so clearly there's a need to provide psychiatric and behavioral support for kids with chronic medical illness. Yeah, we know that, that, that a lot of the consults uh, that we get are typically due to sort of Oh, usually about three big reasons. Uh, quite often there are, are direct psychiatric consequences of the illness. So particularly those illnesses that affect the central nervous system, that affect the brain. Sometimes the illness demands that the child and the family have to change aspects of their life and they have to adjust to that and that can be really problematic. And then sometimes we also see kids that have pre-morbid psychiatric problems before they're diagnosed with medical um, issues. And those kids, I think, are also at risk for increasing rates of psychiatric disorder. So typically for those reasons, it's a really good idea to have a consultation liaison service attached to uh, a pediatric service. So at uh, Primary Children's Medical Center in Salt Lake, um, we have a, a traditional hospital-based CL service where we have attending both attending psychiatrists as well as attending psychologists and then work with a variety of trainees. And we need more outcomes research in terms of looking at can, you know, in this more collaborative model, does providing psychiatric services in a consultation liaison service to these chronically ill population, can that reduce costs overall? Can that reduce hospital stays? Can that reduce, you know, number of ED visits? All these sorts of things, which we all kind of think they do, and there's some sense from the adult literature that they may do. But there may be, again, in this kind of global population-based um, way of, of billing or accounting as opposed to individual, that perhaps psychiatric consultation liaison services are actually going to be more financially viable in the future than they have been. I think it's a, I think it's a critically important uh, program for child and adolescent psychiatry uh, to maintain, to develop. I think our relationship with uh, pediatrics, uh, primary care through tertiary care is going to be critical, I think, to the future of child and adolescent psychiatry. I think we need to help them provide service uh, on a primary care level. Uh, we need to help them understand the importance of uh, child and adolescent psychiatry on a tertiary care level. And together, I think we need to um, do the kind of research and clinical work that's necessary to improve the quality of care for children just in general. Yes, there are challenges with the financial and the administrative and, and you know, support and all these things, but what a fun field to go into, too. I mean, it's just a very fun, intellectually stimulating, fantastic field that every day brings, brings something new and something exciting. I'm Sherry Bosher reporting from the annual meeting of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry.